Linsky announcing the second phase of Russia's war on Ukraine centered around the eastern region of the country that it started. Listen. Now we can already state that Russian troops begun the battle for the Donbass, for which they have been preparing for a long time. A significant part of the entire Russian army is now concentrated on this offensive. No matter how many Russian troops are driven there, we will fight. We will defend ourselves and we will do it every day. We won't give up anything Ukrainian. Joining me now, Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. General Keane, good morning to you and always great to see you. You are also the chairman of the board of directors for the Institute for the Study of War. Last night, the ISW published a significant update on this new phase of the war in Ukraine. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, as President Zelensky has indicated, the, this long-awaited offensive uh, has finally begun, and, and the objective is to take and own the Donbass area in its entirety. So our audience understands this is the contested area between the Ukrainians and the Russians that has existed since 2014. The Russian intent is complete ownership, the fall of Mariupol also, and they would have a land bridge that they've always wanted to Crimea. What their strategic objective really is, is to cut off Ukraine from the coast and therefore d deny them imports and exports, which would be devastating to them in terms of their economy if they became a landlocked country. So that this will actually likely take uh, weeks to accomplish. Uh, whether it can be or not remains to be seen. The Russians have superior numbers, superior firepower for sure. They're very familiar with the area. Uh, unlike what happened up in Kyiv, and they have much shorter supply lines. Uh, as, you, as we pointed out many times, they have serious logistic problems and also morale problems. Mm. And they're committing to this many of the units that have not been completely reconstituted. So there's some units in this fight that are kind of papered over. They, they're a unit on paper, but they're actually much less than that uh, in this fight. The Ukrainians certainly have their skill and their will on their side. They're very familiar with the terrain themselves. And they also have a lot of imagination and creativity in the way they go about uh, do, doing their business. So the outcome here, I don't think anybody can predict it at this point. Um, we'll see how we see how this goes. It's very critical that we continue to get the arms and munitions to the Ukrainians. They have much longer supply lines, obviously, they're coming all the way from Poland in terms of the resupply of, of that munition. But it's absolutely uh, critical that the sustainment that of these critical weapons be continued. General Keane, Russian missile attacks killing seven people, injuring 11 in Lviv yesterday. The Pentagon calling those recent strikes from Moscow, quote, shaping operations. Defense officials saying that they're intended to try to hamper Ukraine's ability to resupply its combat forces before the major offensive in the east. Your thoughts on that, in some ways creating a, a distraction in different parts of the country so that uh, Ukrainian troops can't, you know, come together, band together um, to fight in one area. Well, I don't completely agree with that assessment. I think what's actually happening here is the second objective has been the civilian population, and that means aerial bombardment and, where possible, the certainly rocket and tube artillery. And that'll continue because this is an important part of the Russian aspect of military operations. They continuously want to break the will of the people, put pressure on Zelensky, that people are being killed every single day, and he want, they want that emotional and psychological pressure there. Uh, Lviv is just another city that they, they do some of this at. This is the first time they've taken casualties, and mm. uh, re regrettably so. But they're not yet focused on the supply lines that are coming out of uh, Poland or coming out of other countries uh, into Ukraine to give them mun the munitions that they so desperately need. They, they, the Russians have just not been able to organize themselves with the combat power to do that and at the same time focus on this main effort that's taken place in the Donbass region. Let me switch gears for a moment because the war in Ukraine causing some concern in Taiwan as well over this 
fragile internet connection, the island relying on undersea cables that could potentially throw the country offline um, if those cables were cut in a Chinese attack. Ukraine's internet has stayed mostly online throughout the invasion. Um, the civilians there and the government using it to help rally for resistance. Meanwhile, one of China's biggest state media personalities warning that there's a high probability that tensions between the United States, China, and Taiwan rise to a di direct military conflict. Your thoughts on that? We saw this in the Arab Spring, too. The Internet's so important to disseminate information and keep people on the ground updated. Well, there's no doubt the Internet has been extremely valuable to uh, President Zelensky and, and his leaders, not only in terms of his own population and being able to communicate with them, and they also understand what's happening uh, all around the country. The, the reports they get from people are, are considerably more than what they get through military channels. And also, Zelensky's been able to uh, communicate to the world, as, as have the people and what is happening to them. So it's been a huge, powerful instrument. It surprised us that the Russians did not take them off the air. And, and uh, that remains to be a question mark as to why they, why they did not commit to do that. But certainly in a, in a future conflict, uh, involving Taiwan, uh, that's an island country, and they only have two cable systems coming into it, where the Internet is largely dependent on it. Uh, it doesn't take much to cut, cut those under, undersea cables. So that certainly uh, is a factor. I, when you look at Taiwan and you look at Ukraine and you see Russia and China, respectively, I think the major lesson we got to learn here is we should have been providing Ukraine arms and munitions a long time ago and taking Putin's threats seriously. Mm. And we should take President Xi's threats seriously and be upgunning Taiwan now, right. not in an emergency way that we're doing here with Ukraine. Let's get it in there and make it a part of the deterrence to prevent President Xi from actually conducting that attack if he believes the cost is going to be too great. And, we'll, and there's challenges there because you just don't go across the border as Russians are doing in Ukraine. There's 100 miles of ocean in the Taiwan Straits that separates mainland China from Taiwan. And that is a formidable operation to conduct. I hear you. Play offense, less defense. It always feels like we're on our heels with this administration, and that um, is sometimes problematic. General Jack Keane, thank you so much. Great to see you this morning. Yeah, great talking to you, Jackie. Thank you. Sure.